So here's the accumulation of a week in my life. I'll never get back. Uh, the back's around this. This is my buddy's work light. And the lamp holder's finally cracked out. Uh, before that, he's always having problems with the bulbs dinking on and off. Just from expansion contraction. As well as the um, contacts pitting and stuff like that. So he asked me if I could retrofit it with LEDs. And at the time it sounded like fun, so I said I would. I uh, actually took quite a bit of time, uh, most of the time spent making the heat sink and getting that to fit all the contours and sloping angles of the housing. I uh, wanted that as tight as possible uh, to get the best heat transfer um, through the housing itself. Uh, it's kind of a second heat sink. So the bullet points on this, I have milled out the back of the housing, I have the heat sink as far back as possible to get the uh, fins as exposed as possible. I have four screws holding that in there and I used Arctic Silver epoxy heat sink compound. Uh, I put a bead of that all the way around to seal the dust and water as well as get the best transfer uh, through the housing itself. Uh, the chips I used, they are uh, 24 volt, 5000K, 5300 lumen chips, and it's kind of nice that they uh, have housings there, so they are easily replaced um, should they fail, but like most LEDs, I think it's 50,000 hour run time. I did reuse the reflectors, and I cut those to fit, and epoxy those all together. Um, driving these chips is a waterproof uh, LED driver and um, those are a necessity. We use a regular 24 volt power supply. Uh, you can only run them for a while because the thermal runaway that happens, uh, I'll end up burning up the chips. Um, the harder they get, the more they draw and it just keeps going um, until they burn out. So uh, that's with passive cooling, is what we got. Uh, if you had active cooling with a fan, uh, it's a lot better. And you probably wouldn't have to worry about that. Um, but I don't want fans on here because they would just get destroyed and wear out. So with this driver, I can set the voltage and current. And I set it right to manufacturer specs. And it um, seems to maintain heat pretty well, which should uh, make the bulbs or chips last longer. Um, if you run out with a power supply, even for like 15 minutes, uh, these heat sinks will burn your hand pretty good. Right now, with the driver, uh, you can hold your hand on them. It's not super comfortable, uh, but you can do it. So, uh, we can turn these on. I do have a stand right next to it. Uh, same thing, but halogen. And we'll see if it starts. Uh, problem with one of the bulbs, same thing with pitting contacts and stuff. Which is kind of nice with these. It's no longer an issue, as well as vibration. Um, all that's taken care of, so. I'll kill the lights and we'll see if they'll start. Plug it in there. Hey, it started. So, those are the halogens. Um, camera's showing a little bit wider than what it really is. It's actually pretty yellow. Um, that does do a pretty good job. And we can turn those off and turn the LEDs on. So it's pretty comparable. Um, the LEDs are drawing like 0.9 amps. So it hardly takes anything to run them, uh, which is kind of nice. Plus the runtime, vibration resistance, and all that. Um, it's definitely a bonus. Uh, they are pretty painful to look at, but um, uh, they do work pretty well. Now, it's not to say that halogens still don't have their place. They are still really good at paint drying, but um, it's definitely a way to go with the LEDs, and I don't know if it's really worth spending all this time to make one week of time and all that 
Um, I guess it just pays to buy one. But if you're looking for a project, um, parts cost. I need about a five amp yeah, power supply there. Uh, it's 75 bucks, and the chips are $35 a piece. So you're looking at around $160, $170 to do this. Um, the other bonus is that it is easily repairable and um, should last a long time. Um, so that's pretty much it.